real quick before uh, Donald starts. Um, we are doing really good. We've got signups. Um, uh, I don't have that tab handy, but we have them like for the rest of the um, the year and then into next year. So we should be good there. Um, I don't know how much everyone has seen in the uh, uh, chat, but the um, online version of the book has been updated to match the print version of the book, which means chapter or the introduction chapter no longer is numbered and it's, everything shifted by a chapter. So if you see, uh, like today, we're going to be talking about chapter four, which uh, a few days ago was chapter five um, and uh, and so on all the way through. Um, not a big deal, but you will see within the notes, there might be uh, things named based on the chapter and those no will all be off by one number. Um, so just watch out for that as you're uh, updating slides. Um, and yeah, next week, Floris has signed up for data tidying. Uh, the week after that, we are skipping um, just to make everything easier for the Thanksgiving holiday here in the US. Um, and then I don't have a schedule to skip uh, anything after that. Um, I'm still sorting out what we're going to do in the spring for daylight savings between Europe and US because there's actually multiple weeks where we're going to be off. Uh, it, like out of sync, um, unfortunately. We'll sort that out as we get closer. And all the winter holidays, we um, were like off by a few days for all of them. So, so far I'm thinking we won't skip any, but um, the 22nd, maybe we will. And we'll talk about that as we get closer. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's it for all this. Uh, without further ado, Donald, uh, take it away for chapter four. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, this is another workflow chapter that's focused on specifically coding style. Um, the objectives are this chapter to kind of talk about the styler package a little bit, um, um, which also is another name they're known as linting in other programming languages if you work with Python or anything like that. Um, we're also going to discuss selecting good variable names and, and why that's valuable and also appropriately utilizing spaces and the new pipe operator. Um, one thing that I noticed from this version of the document compared to the previous versions of uh, the first edition, for instance, is that um, our studio now has their, or the Tidyverse has their own pipe operator now, instead of using the McGritter package. So, so some of those extra information around uh, the unique uh, pipes involved in the McGritter package are no longer uh, in this version. So, you know, just another cool package that if we have time, that'd be cool to explore. Um, I love this quote though. Oh, so why bother with a good uh, coding style? And uh, one of the reasons you want to do that is because, yeah, you can code without it, but it sure does make reading things a lot easier. And I just think that's a really great quote from the Tidyverse style guide. Oh, and there's a, a there's a whole another package for linting too. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, Styler, Styler just does um, some of the strict style things, whereas Linter does uh, checks for syntax errors and it checks for oh, okay. um, Great. more like the details of how you code versus how you space things is what Styler oh, okay. is focused on. Thank you. Yeah, I'm used yeah. to like in <laughs> Python, I guess they're one of the linting packages I use in Python does kind of bolt together. And I just assumed I, that term was for linting, but that's good to know. Okay. I think technically Linter can do all of it, but Styler is, uh, like the faster, easier one to run more often. Um, oh, cool. So, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the segue right into the, the lending package, um, uh, it was created by uh, Lawrence uh, Walhart, and it allows you to just quickly apply some of the styles that we'll be talking about today. And there's actually a cool shortcut for it. Uh, uh, CMD control shift plus P uh, allows you to kind of open the palette and kind of look at the uh, style specifically. Um, I do kind of want to go through some of the uh, styles first, and then maybe we can kind of dive into the uh, st the styler package. So uh, first off, the uh, book talks about uh, naming conventions. Uh, generally, you want to uh, focus on lowercase letters. Uh, you want to use numbers, and then also underscores. And what does that look like? Uh, it's generally called a snake case. It's a 
the preferred style. So instead of having in all capitalized uh, like short flights, for example, you can just use short underscore flights. Um, that's known as snake case. And a really cool package, which I'm not sure is technically part of the tidyverse, but I know Jenny Bryan made it, is the janitor package. And you can pipe your data into janitor and then use the clean underscore names function, would, which automatically converts everything into snake case. Um, a really fun fact about snake case. Just to, is, oh, go ahead. Quick, quick interjection. Jenny Bryan didn't make janitor. Oh, uh, that's a didn't. totally independent oh, team. I am so uh, sorry. I totally I always for key, I think it's pronounced. It. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's it um, called? It's Sam Ferk or Ferky. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for correcting yeah. me. Okay. Um, and then there's also these, uh, there's a package called snake case that is specifically just around like converting between case systems, which can oh, be that's, cool. I bet that's super useful too, because you know, there's so many <laughs> extra things in janitor that aren't, then probably uh, you don't need. Uh, thank you for the correction. Um, another just fun thing about snake cases is another version of all capital underscores called screaming snake case. It's not totally preferred. It's just fun to say. So I just thought I'd mention. Um, so uh, with that, there's also uh, for naming conventions, you want to include non long descriptive names that are generally a series of underscores. Um, I don't know if there's a, a hard and fast rule on the maximum number of underscores. I prefer four uh, total words, so three underscores, but I don't think there's a real convention around that. Um, but also if you have like uh, concise names like temp one, temp two, temp three, it's really hard to see what is what is going on in your data set if you have all these issues. Or even if you overwrite the previous data set, then you have no idea where in your code uh, you can be troubleshooting or what lines to focus on. Um, spaces are also pretty important for readability as well. Um, the general um, rules are around parentheses. You don't put spaces, uh, but within mathematical operators, you do. Uh, so for example, here for the assignment operator, you generally have a space in between, and then you have a space in between the plus sign and also the um, division sign. The only exception for math operators is when you're using an exponent. Uh, in which case you don't put a space there. And that just makes it a little bit easier to kind of understand what is being exponentiated. Um, you can also use spacing to help make uh, reading function calls a lot easier as well. Um, I actually don't think this code will run if uh, there's a space in between the actual function and the parentheses uh, for the argument. Whereas in this case, um, having, it, uh, having no space there allows this main function to run. And then you generally want to space after the comma as well. Um, there's some really nice examples from the exercise that kind of shows how cleaner code, uh, how how easily readable the code is after making it cleaner. That'll uh, kind of combine all these concepts together. Um, you know, and uh, in the case of uh, the mutate statement, having extra spaces kind of allows you to align the uh, equals operators. So you can kind of see all their operations that are happening um, in line. So in this case, instead of having only a single spacing between speed and what speed is calculating, spacing it out. So when you have these longer uh, variable names, they're kind of all side by side, allows you to easily see what each step is doing. Uh, next, when it comes to the pipe operator, um, having um, indenting after each um, space in, into a new line it just makes it also a little bit more readable. So you have your data frame flights, then you pipe, and then you indent into your next line. Um, so you can see the filter statement on the, on the next line. And then depending on how long your filter statement is, you also might want to um, indent for each one of those, kind of like what you do with the mutate statement. Um, this is easier to read because uh, it adds new steps. It allows rearranging steps also a little bit easier, especially when it comes to adding additional variable names in a mutate statement. And it also uh, allows you to kind of see the overall uh, system of what's going on. So you can see it, this, uh, this bottom example is a lot harder to read compared to this top example where you have some indentation and some additional spacing. Um, I kind of talked a little bit about new lines already, 
But once again, you know, adding new lines uh, makes it uh, really easy to read your code if you were to have it as one long text string. Um, the general rule is to put uh, named arguments on a new line, kind of like what we saw with the mutate statement. Um, just for example, uh, for summarize here, we have the name delay and we have that on its own line. And then followed by that, we have n, which is just the count. And putting unnamed arguments on one line if they fit. So group, for instance. Um, but as I was talking about the filter earlier, sometimes if you have a whole bunch of filters in the same filter statement, it might be easier to have them on their own separate line. Uh, this is easier than, for instance, looking at uh, group by where you have this unnamed argument, tail numbers uh, grouped on its own, and then trying to see a condensed version of the summarized statement on the bottom. Uh, I talked a little bit about indentation, but um, one of the nice things about RStudio is when you do uh, hit enter, it automatically gives you two indentations, which is also four spaces. And that's certainly the uh, equivalent um, of the tidy styling that, that we like to see when it comes to these uh, kind of functions. It makes it easier to read and it kind of allows you to understand what is a part of each step. So for the summarize function, for instance, um, it's in the, the two spaces into it and you, it makes it easier to read that these uh, named variables are a part of this function. And it's while you can go further indentation, uh, it, it does look a little bit messier um, and it's, it's generally not considered appropriate style. Uh, there, there are some scenarios where you can uh, kind of break the rules. If you have a really small named function, for instance, like this new state statement here, uh, you know, there's really no point in to put it onto multiple lines. Um, or, um, yeah, it, and this is just the example. If you do break it out, it just seems like a whole lot of extra real estate for something that's really small. The general rule when it comes to piping is to have it to be um, limited to 10 to 15 lines. Um, I don't have an example right here, but uh, you know, one of the cool things about R is the uh, when you look at the appearance function in R Studio, you can actually limit. You can have kind of a dashed line into where um, is the max number of characters for for um, the total number of spacing on a row, and then also you can kind of count out the number of lines, right? Um, and, I, and I'll show an example of that in RStudio a little bit later to make that a little bit clearer. Uh, ggplot has very similar rules, um, like what we see for uh, just using the pipe operator in, in a data frame, where you can start off by piping your data into a ggplot, and then you can use the plus sign uh, and it follows a similar ruling as you do with pipe operator. Yeah. And this here's a, just another more in-depth example where you kind of go from using uh, the flights data set, um, going into the uh, named variables, and then piping into a ggplot, and then kind of going through all the named variables within a ggplot function. Uh, one of the really nice things about this is it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more readable when it comes to editing things like the geom smooth function within ggplot. Um, and then if you were to add even more um, advanced functions to that, the fact that they're segmented out and uh, in depth, it makes it a little bit easier to see where to edit. Another uh, cool thing that is pivotal to uh, making the book down document is sectioning comments, right? Uh, so these all like workflow code style is actually double commented, uh, sorry, double uh, pound signs, and then it's the term workflow style. And then you can continue to add indentations for extra information using these section comment sections. And uh, another cool thing in our studio is if you're trying to find a specific comment section, if you're really detailed in naming your code chunks, it makes it super easy to find those uh, sections, uh, which which is uh, makes it really easy to kind of sift through if you have a massive amount of code on a, a single line. And uh, with that, I'm just going to go through some of the exercises. So here is a, uh, I'm not sure if anyone else, I kind of messed around with these, but um, here's an example of some code that probably isn't the best coding style practice that we want to see, 
everything's on one long uh, texturing line and uh, there's no indentation. You can't really see what is uh, going on uh, in the overall data set, but you can uh, follow the tips that we learned in this section where we put a space for an Africa pipe and we um, go onto a new line after the end of the pipe. Um, we can indent twice here. Uh, we can add a space after each comma for the group by statement uh, and it's an unnamed variable. So we'll just keep it on the same line. And then for the uh, summarize statement where it is a named variable, we can have a new line for each one to make it really easy to add new variables if we want to summarize other things. And um, yeah, it's just a lot easier to see what's going on in uh, this function than it is to go on uh, this next one. Um, the next example is it's very similar. Um, it's just um, it's just a, a little bit longer here. You kind of can move the um, name characters in a filter statement to kind of be farther out. Um, this is actually a really good example of a filter statement that's really, really long. And so it might be uh, too long to keep on a single line. So it is a lot easier to read if you indent it onto a new line. And uh, with that, that's kind of goes through, this chapter was relatively short after the rearranging of some things. Um, it, are there any specific questions or any um, ideas people have? Um, yeah, I would like to uh, note that uh, in the beginning of the chapter, uh, there was something new to me. Uh, I, I think it's very interesting. It's the RStudio's command palette, which you can access with Control, yeah. Control, Shift, P. And then you can just type anything which is in the menu or in the add-ons or in the settings. Uh, that was an eye-opener for me. <laughs> yeah, I've never I've never seen that before either. That was pretty awesome. Um, I, I think I think it was in the first session of this group. We also talked about other things you can add to our studio appearance to make it easier to read. And I really love rainbow parentheses. <laughs> I find it super super useful, especially <laughs> when you have multiple indented uh, multiple indented functions, for instance. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if anyone else has any other um, cool things they want to add as far as making your life easier for coding. Right? Something that I've seen a fair amount recently, but I haven't, I don't know, gotten in the habit of it yet is, um, I'm going to try to do this real quick, is when you're assigning, um, or when you have a pipe that you're going to assign to something, putting the thing you're going to assign it to on its own line, and then start the pipe and so you <clears throat> start like the, the starting object on the next okay. line the one thing that i find that helpful for is you can comment out the x equals or x you know x gets with just control shift c to run the code while you're kind of playing around with things and then uncomment it when you're done um and we'll come back to the command palette again in a second but the so I don't know yet. Like I, I ha I'm not totally sold on this, <laughs> but um, the the idea of um, like being able to comment out that first line can be helpful when you're messing around. I, I um, have to agree, definitely. I, you know, now that you say that, it's just so useful because I've definitely been in this scenario quite a few times. That's the other reason I love the indent thing is because if I'm strategically commenting out filters, you know, initially I might have. Uh, inappropriately multiple filters or multiple uh, lines or things. And then I'll comment out one filter to see how it changes just really quickly instead of having a whole new set of filters for the same data set. And uh, I could see that being really easy for troubleshooting before you go on to your next data set. Right. I also uh, use that a lot. Uh, so to, to have a separate line with the object and the assignment operator. Um, the only annoying thing then, if you do that and you comment out this object line, is that uh, the indentation in our studio will ignore that. So it will the first line of the pipe line will be will not be indented, and then you have to adjust that again if you want a nicely styled code. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when you're when you have the x gets commented out empty car or uh, flights would want to be uh, all the way to the left. Yes, you just have to avoid telling our studio to indent it at that point, 
while it's commented. Um, and then the other one is um, to find like find functions that basically don't do anything. So for example, print, you can pipe a pipe into print and just put print at the end and it doesn't really do anything because it just makes a print, which it's gonna do anyway. Um, and then you can comment out any line without breaking your pipe. So again, kind of while you're experimenting, you can comment out that last line that has a pipe on it and it still, it won't break. Um, whereas, you know, normally you, there are certain lines you can't. And then uh, likewise, when you're working with ggplots, you can do plus null and that doesn't do anything. And so you can have plus null as your last step of a ggplot. Again, kind of like while you're fiddling with things, maybe not in your final code, but. Do you mean um, that, uh, that then you can avoid uh, deleting the pipe or the plus sign in the last statement? That's yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you can leave. Yeah. You can have the, the pipe hanging there at the end and it won't break anything mm -hmm. as long as you keep the null or the print um, uncommented. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to use I for that, just capital I, um, but there are actually things now that I have run into where um, it treats treats it different if it has the I on the end versus if it doesn't, which it kind of shouldn't. Um, I've never heard kind of, of this I method. I've heard of the plus null at the end of the yeah. method, but I is a... So, I it, it, so the... I returns a copy of the object with class as is prepended to the classes. So it's an extra class. So that's not nothing. Um, so that one actually does have an impact. So I don't use that anymore for that. Um, but it used to, it used to work. <laughs> um, so to go back, uh, uh, Esperance asked about the uh, command palette. It's just, so if you do control shift P in our studio, uh, it'll bring it up and it's like this, um, like it's list of everything right our studio can do basically. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just starting with the uh, arm, I, I only, I exclusively program on R markdown notebooks for the most part, but if I did a uh, control shift P, you get this cool, uh, command list here, which is, uh, like all these cool things you can do to restart the R session without needing to go all the way up into the session information and you can open a new file, you can create a project. Um, it's like really nifty and I've never seen that before. And uh, it's just making me sooner and sooner get rid of my mouse for programming. Completely, yeah. Right. So, so that's good. And it's, it's really useful if you know that it's possible to do a thing in our studio, but you can't remember where that is. Uh, you can just control shift P and, oh, mm -hmm. oh I know it's yeah. like create. So, oh, what is it? I don't remember what it says. So you just type create and then you can get the list of everything that is related to create. Um, I, I didn't know about that either. So I haven't played around with it a lot to um, see how I will use it, but I want to try to remind myself it's there. Uh, yeah. Cause I have had that situation where I'm like, oh, how do you, you know, what do they call it? What menu is that in? I can't remember, but I can remember vaguely what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, just one thing I did want to show in my R studio IDE is that I have, I have this line here for the max number of characters. Cause if I were to make this like, <laughs> A single pane, or if I wanted to share it, it just makes it way easier and more readable. If uh, if I have like a max text string, I think it's like I think it's like 112 characters. I, I can't it's probably remember. 80. 80. Yes, sir. it's based off pep eight, and I yeah. So yeah, 80. yeah. people have been uh, pushing back on that. Of hey, monitors oh, oh are much bigger okay. now. You don't need to do 80 characters anymore. But I mean, there's a reason newspapers use narrow columns still. And, and websites will use narrow columns because it's easier to read. If the line gets too long, you get lost. So Yeah, and, and sometimes I, I, still... I like to play around with uh, my data sets <laughs> yeah. over here a lot. And so if I'm able to like have it be a little bit larger so I can see things, makes it easy. you can see here, I'm obviously doing some type of GG animate <laughs> on the bottom there with a billion different images there. You can ignore that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, oh. I, just yeah. um, it's not going to show anything in, interesting in what what you have open right now, but also the the outline button there in our studio. Um, when you have those comment bars, uh, the outline those get added to the outline. So if you look at the top right oh. of your yeah, I know exactly editor. what you're talking about. Uh, I'm actually yeah. going to do a uh, I'm going to make a this a cool 
Tom, I'm gonna make a couple. Uh, this is this is another cool chunk, and then um, no, it's not <laughs> whatever. Is cool, yeah, you yeah. know, just like that, yeah. And yep. uh, wait, it's right here, yeah. So really cool. Under R is cool. I have my super cool chunks, and then I oh. have my like generic notebook or something. So uh, it's really cool. Yeah, that's you, so that it's also there. But if you go up to the top right, you can. Uh, where it says outline. Oh, wait, what? Okay, sorry, I uh, I did not know this part. And that one, it only shows the headers, but it shows you like a table of contents of what you're working on. And if you're in a .r file, I think it shows the functions are in the outline. So that's also always there. Um, yes. Okay, that's <laughs> so nifty, thank you. Okay, Yeah. I, I see and, you were just talking but, about this tiny thing on the bottom, but okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, and in in code, you know, in dot r files, if you do those um, comment lines that you get with the control shift r, like they talked about, those will get added to the outline outline as that like so cool. headers. So that's awesome. Yeah, um, the other nice thing, and you know, you can see it here in the RMD is whenever you have a header, you get the little triangle next to it, which means you can collapse it. And so if over on the left, like by the number six, there's the little triangle. Oh, yeah. And that'll collapse that whole section. I did not know um, you could collapse the sections. I knew you could collapse chunks. Yep. I'm definitely using this way more now. <laughs> I, have, I have some pretty long code that uh, that's in a whole bunch of chunks, and this is great. And then you know the asterisk asterisk in in an RMD is going to that's a header. Uh, you know it'll print in the output. Oh so. yeah, yeah. But then I'm thinking uh, that's bold, right? Yes. Yeah, and all that other fun stuff. But yeah, if you do like a, a if you do three hashes and do a, a sub subheader and just whatever, so that there you go. That it shows up indented under its header. Um so yeah, those are useful. Uh and this is and this is super long. So well it just because it's like multiple lines of code. And I was up here programming. Uh, could I, would it just jump down if I hit nice? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, all of that's really helpful for, you know, being able to navigate in your code and then, you know, uh, we'll get into it later, but the other one is don't make your files super long <laughs> and separate it into, yeah, into yeah, separate yeah. files. And, uh, uh, with relation to the RStudio pane layouts, um, I really prefer to switch the left bottom with the top right corner. I have a couple other I have a couple coworkers who do that. My brain just can't can't do it. I, it's simply because it. you can then zoom on just the code on the left and the console on the right, and you have much more height. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Because it's kind yeah. of pretty limiting. Yeah. It's really, um, and I see everyone scrolling, scrolling in that small console box where everything is happening. It's just, uh, yeah, yeah, I find it very no. limiting. <laughs> it's just my personal uh, take. So my current way of dealing with that is number one, the I have the console and the editor about half, half and half, and oh, using so the discipline of functions should be short. And so they should fit in that half box. I mean, that's way longer than anything, any function I'm going to write that half size box. So um, that's a totally, you know, that's another uh, layer of it. Yeah. I don't, I like the, having the width for um, seeing more of like a, a data frame when I print it or things like that. Yeah. So but like uh, um, you GG animate, you know, this becomes a nice little plot area. So, yeah. But yeah, I know, I have seen a lot of people do the um, switching the layouts. I also like you know you can have um, multiple files in view now that it didn't used to be possible, but you can yeah, have multiple a, columns of files. There's a um, um, uh, what is it? The thing where you split it? I haven't I haven't done it before. Um, I, I I did it once and then I forgot how to do it. Um, I no, um. Don't remember. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, pane layout, and then you can do add column, 
and you can have an extra source, for example. You can use the command palettes and perhaps uh, type. Yes. Yeah, I just want to, for, for the sake of completion, I want to do it. Um, where's pain again? It's in view, right? Pain, there we go. I don't know if there's a, there's do multiple, right? Well, I think maybe I need another code chunk already set up. I'm sorry, I was in another window. So are you looking for? So what I wanted to do was I wanted to show how you can split these two side by side. Okay, go up to tools and then um, global options and pane layout there. So the fifth thing, yeah, and add column. There we are. Okay, thank you. I thought there's another can way to drag right, one. Right, right click and do it quickly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Not that I know I of, know. at least. Yeah, this is great though, right? I don't know. This can be useful if you're working on like uh, I do a lot of function developments that end up in another master file, right? So if you can like have the function you're working on here and then save it out and it gets pulled into another thing, but that's good. Cool. Yeah, I like still haven't gotten. <laughs> This is probably like two years old now at this point or something, but in my head it's new. And uh, I'm like, oh, I, you know, I just haven't gotten around to messing with the funky new multi uh, column pane layout. Yeah. Um, One, uh, another thing, I, I, I'm sure it's going to come up in a future video, so I don't want to spoil it too much. <laughs> but um, uh, you can make, I used to make custom snippets a lot, but you can never roll them into an R package. But as of like last year, you can now roll custom snippets into an R package. So like uh, a snippet is like you're at FUN and then you click enter. Now you have this uh, thing all set up for you to write your function or whatever. Um, but you can make your own custom snippets for whatever thing you're doing. If you have some type of standardized data frame or if you're doing like knit the PowerPoint where it has all those tedious extra column kind of things. I mean, no one's gonna knit the PowerPoint anymore because of Cordo, but if you were, then like, you know, that would, uh, it's super useful for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, very cool. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. Uh, I think it's okay to have a short week. <laughs> and so um, if no one else has anything else, we can have uh, almost a half hour back. All right. Well, happy Friday, everyone. Hope you yeah. have a good weekend. Thank you all for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Great Bye. presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. All Bye. Right.